Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. Now, today I'm going to try something a little different. You know, we, we do a lot with those uh, Bake a Pie episodes, and people seem to dig those things, you know, putting them in the, uh, the Commodore, putting them into an arcade one-up, and we're always, we tend to think macro, big, right? We want these things to be awesome. Well, today, we're going to go the other direction. Today, we're going to go tiny. Hang tight, let's get started. All right, guys, so as I was saying, you know, typically when we're doing these Raspberry uh, conversions, um, we're usually using the, uh, the Raspberry Bs, uh, the B3s, or in some cases even the 4s, and I'll show Stumpy that. But in this case, we're going to do something a little bit different. I thought to myself, we're always putting it into big things, you know, and there's so much more we can do with these things, but we're not going to put it into something big. What we're going to do today is, wait a minute, what's that? That's an Atari cartridge, a regular old school generic Atari 2600 cartridge. You know, you can pick these things up for a couple bucks a piece out there. They're all over the place, but we're going to do something cool to it. We're actually going to turn this into an active full gaming machine. All right. So to do this little project, we only need a couple of items. Check this out. So we're going to need an X-Acto knife. Now, uh, any knife or razor will work. You'll understand why here in just a second. All right. We're going to need a Raspberry. Now, this is not your standard Raspberry B3. This is a Raspberry Pi 0W. All right, you guys get that? I'm going to show Stumpy here what this looks like now that we have Stumpy that will actually focus on it. All right, so what the 0W is, you can see how small that is. That's about the size of a stick of gum right there. All right, and I've already applied the CPU fan to the top of this. But as you can see, kind of like the other Raspberries, it's got a lot of the same ports. So this is actually a mini HDMI. This is actually the power, and this is actually going to be for your uh, USB. It's actually an adapter um, to mini USB. So in order to use those effectively, we are going to have a couple of adapters on here. Uh, and these adapters, as you can see, this one goes from that mini HDMI up to a full size. And this one's going to go from the mini uh, uh, USB up to the full size USB. And then, of course, we'll have a power adapter with it also. All right. Now, optionally, and this is something that I'll be probably doing on a future build, but I'll show you this anyway, uh, we may be adding in a little fan. Now, in order to add that in, you're going to have to have some pen headers, and you know, you can buy these things. Uh, usually, I buy them by the gross, and you can see this is what they look like, and just break off the ones you need, and that's because the Raspberry Pi Zero, if you look at the pen headers, there's no pens on them. It's just holes. Um, we may or may not do it for this particular video. We're not going to add the fan, but I'm going to show you where I'm going to place it on the next one. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. All right, so all of these Atari cartridges, they come apart the exact same way, and it's actually really, really simple, all right? Uh, but there is one other thing you're going to want to do when you get it apart. So you want to take your X-Acto blade. If you feel on here with your finger, you're going to feel an indent. That's a screw hole, okay? What you want to do is you want to cut out a little circle here, right where that screw is, and pull this out. Now, if you do this right, you will still maintain most of the integrity of this label. Now, incidentally, you can absolutely uh, heat this up lightly. I might add lightly with a heat gun and peel this label off. Or um, there are a couple of YouTubers out there, like the 8-bit guy, that has actually relabeled cartridges like this for Nintendos and Ataris. Um, you can look him up. It, he'll show you how to do it. You can 3D print these things, excuse me, regular print these things. Um, you can silk screen them if you really wanted to, but yeah, we're not going to get into that. So, all right, once you've got that off there and you've exposed that screw, you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to go ahead and pull that screw out. And just comes right out like that, all right? Okay. Once you've got that, now you're going to, around the sides, you can actually feel this, and I'm going to squish this so you can see it. You'll be able to see, see how the side kind of moves when I do that? This has got four clips, two on each side, and all you have to do is squeeze it on that side and lift up on that clip. See how that came off? Now, once you get one side off, what I like to use is one of these little priors that you use to, uh, for like phone screens and such, and apply it underneath that little thing, and you'll see it'll come right off and it'll pop that side just like that, all right? You're going to rinse and repeat the same thing on the other side. So get one side up, and then put your little prior up there, and up it comes. All right, once you've got it to this point, 
open it up. Now, be careful, guys. If you've got this label on the back, you can preserve this if you're real careful. Open this up real gently. And that is all there is to the inside of an Atari cartridge. All right, you're going to remove this. You're going to remove this. You're going to remove the actual ROM itself, which, by the way, this thing is really, really cool. I want to show you. Um, I've done a few conversions on these so far to test how well this works. And as you can see, I've actually got a collection of these little ROMs back here. And I took the heat shield off of them so you could actually see this thing. But they are really neat. I'm going to do some sort of a cool collage with these things. Uh, just the idea that every one of these has a game on it is really cool to me. I know some people might look at that and go, oh, yeah, that's kind of cheesy. But I'm thinking about framing them. That should look kind of cool. All right. We'll go ahead and remove this spring. Now, this is the spring that gave that uh, this piece a little bit of push when you would put it into the actual machine. All right, so we're going to set all this aside. Now, you're asking yourself, how in the world are we going to get this to sit in here? Back to the magic of 3D printing. Now, let me show you a little part that I printed up over here. Now, for any of you guys that want the STL file, and for those who don't know, that's actually the... Uh, uh, the 3D file for printing. In other words, if you've got it, you can create uh, uh, create this object, and then you can size it, you can modify it, whatever you want to. And I give you full permission, whatever you want to do. In fact, I'll show you what I'm thinking about doing next here shortly. Um, so, as you can see, this has actually got the ports to access the power, the uh, joystick port, and the HDMI, as well as a vent here for ventilation. Um, these do not generate a great deal of heat, but we're going to give it some ventilation anyway. Now, on this side, it's got the SD card slot. I am not going to use that, and I'll show you why, because this is more or less fully enclosed, and I don't want to butcher this cartridge, all right? Okay, so when you put this in place, you're going to see that I have printed this to where it will literally sit right in where this piece used to be and take its place. That's it. Nothing else to it. Then you take your Raspberry Pi Zero, and it, you can see you're going to go on a little down slope here. And I've got two, if you can probably see this by this uh, picture here, I've got two little notches printed right here. You can see the little notches, and those notches are actually going to fit into the Raspberry. Now, one other thing I want to tell you, when you're doing this project, the top side of the case has got this small little notch right here. Um, I have been considering knocking that little notch out, and I'm going to go ahead and do that for this one so I can show you why. So if you cut this little notch out of here, what it does is it gives you an intake for air. So if you do put a fan on here, you can cut a little hole right there and then pull the air in and blow it out the front. And that's what we're thinking about doing. All right, so let's go ahead and take our cartridge. Let's put our little adapter back in here. As you see, it sits right in place there. And your Raspberry, take it, put it in on that little downward notch, like I said. And when you get this in place, and I'm going to show you guys this, you can actually do this outside. Listen closely. Click there. Click there. It literally, with this print dimension, snaps into place. This can't come out. All right? Place this in here. Now, here's the optional thing that I was talking about. At this point, you can button this up and be done with it. But what I'm considering doing, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this out there to you guys too and, and let me know what you think about it. Um, once you've got this in place right here, okay, and you can see this is actually where the support screw is, you're ready to go more or less, okay? Uh, the only thing left to do in here is to actually put in the SD card, but we'll get to that here in just a second. All right, so as you can see, um, the vent is right in front of the fan, and that's actually printed that way intentionally. The reason I did that, and my thought was, I was going to take one of these little fans, run it off these jumpers, do a solder to it, and then mount this fan on an angle right there. Now, as you can see, that's just enough clearance to where it would pull air in from this hole, route it across this, and blow it right out the front. Honestly, I've been running a couple of these now for a while, and I have not had any heat problems with them, so I'm not overly concerned about the fan. But on a future revision of this, this will probably be on there just for safety's sake. So... Now, now that we've got it to this point, we're ready to go. But the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and put our disc in. Now, this is a standard version of RetroPie uh, that is designed for the Pi Zero. Now, you want to make sure that it's designed for this because this will not push the same caliber and, and difficulty of games that the B3 will. But it will handle most handheld console games, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, the original Nintendo, Sega, Master System, so on and so forth. Um, so... You'll still be able to get, you know, five to 10,000 games on this one. Uh, once again, 
Um, no promises on ROMs. You guys got to find those yourself, but a quick Google search will take care of that for you. All right, so once you get the, uh, you got the disk in there, you got your system in here, it's ready to go. And we're going to go ahead and put this down. I want you guys to watch this. This is how close these are. And I'm going to tell you, this is printed so well and with such close dimensions that once you put this on, it's going to be on. It's going to stay on there because these clips fit super, super well. All right? So watch this. Slide that down. Lock it in place. Lock it in place. Lock it in place. And lock it in place. All right. Just like that. All right. Now, as you can see, we have managed to maintain our back label. Got a little ching gout right here, but it was a little ching gout before I started, so not too bad. But as you can see by looking at the front, you now have a game machine mounted in an Atari cartridge. What do you say we give this a try and see what it does? By the way, I don't know if you guys are noticing, but we're uh, testing out new Stumpy today as well as a new audio source. So please, in the description, let me know. Does it sound better? Do you like it? Are we going to go with it? All right. All right. So give me a second. I'm going to get cleaned up here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead. Oh, don't forget to put your last screw in here, guys. Oh, I almost forgot that. We're going to get cleaned up here and I'm going to get this plugged in. I'm going to get Stumpy turned around at this TV so that we can get a good look at what this is going to play like. Here we go. All right, guys. So while hooking this up, there's one thing I want to show you guys. So this is that little adapter I was talking about. It just slides right in here. Now, the one thing you want to remember on these Pi Zeros, and I'm actually, I will probably uh, refine my design on this a little bit. Um, your power is always toward the edge. And as you can see, and I'm going to see if you'll focus on this, they look really, really close to alike. So it's possible to make that mistake. So you want to make sure that your power is over here on the side and your USB is in the center. And the best way to do that is go ahead and put your USB adapter right there. Then you know you won't mess up. All right, so let's go ahead and turn Stumpy around here. And we'll tilt him up here, and I'll show you how we're doing it. All right, here's your, US, your HDMI. And for our game system, we're going to use something a little more old school. So a little controller like this, all right? little generic job. And we're going to plug it in right there. And we're going to give it some power here. Now, this is a switched power source. Not totally necessary, but it beats having to start and restart and stop and restart and all that other good stuff. All right, so our cartridge is now connected. You'd never know it, right? All right, so let's go ahead. We'll bring up the screen, and let's see what it does. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see what happens, shall we? So as you can see, it looks like a regular old cartridge sitting there. Nothing special, right? Let's hit a button and see what happens up here on the screen. Now, once again, what you're going to see is actually an image that I've been working on for a while. This is a different Raspbian image. Um, and if you guys haven't, excuse me, RetroPie image. Uh, there is a version of Raspbian that will run on this, too, that will essentially turn this into a miniature desktop computer. So if you guys have any interest in seeing uh, what that actually looks like, let me know, and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do about putting a uh, video together specifically on that. So... All right, so we're going on in here. Now, a couple things you're going to want to know about the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, it is not as fast by a long shot as the, uh, uh, the B3 or the B3 Plus. Don't expect it to be. It takes a little longer to boot. Uh, the difference is, number one, it does have Wi-Fi, uh, which means that you can connect it to your network at the house, which you're going to need if you're going to want to transfer files. Uh, once again, that's another one. If it, you guys want to see a video like that, let me know. All right, as you can see, we are up here. We are in our games. I've got a few select games on here to test out. So let's just try, let's go for broke here. Let's go to Mario Brothers. What the heck, right? And as you can probably hear, the audio is clearly working. All right, and let's see here. Let's go to the old school Mario Brothers. Here we go. Now, this is the... Uh, uh, this is not the dun -dun 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 -dun, you know the kids are talking about Super Mario. This was the one that was originally launched in the arcade for those of you too young to know that. So here we go. All right. You really don't want to do that right off the bat, but what the heck I was here. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, it runs fantastic. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump out of this and let's check another system real quick. All right. So the Nintendo runs great. The Mega Drive runs fantastic. Uh, the Master System runs good. All of the Game Boys run good. Um, Game Boy Advance did have a couple of interesting issues. The games ran fine, but the audio lagged, and I just can't handle that. So 
Uh, Lynx ran well. <clears throat> All the Ataris ran, of course, fantastic, as well as the SG-1000. So it's a great system. So there you go, guys. You don't always have to think macro. We can go back to tiny. It's really kind of cool sometimes. And here she is, all nice and complete. As you can see, all you can see right here, your three ports. The rest of it is nice and clean. Nobody would even know that was anything except a cartridge. Um, if you are in the area and you'd like to see these live, come on down here and see me. Most of you guys know I'm at the Cattle Barn Flea Market. Um, if you uh, are interested in picking up one of these, let me know. If you just want me to uh, post the STL file, I can email you the STL file so you can print that mod yourself um, or change it around a little bit. I'm actually going to make a couple of modifications to include that fan. Um, I was running this for about, oh, I'd say probably about 20 minutes, just kind of thumbing through games, and it never even got warm to the touch. So I don't think that that's going to be an issue, not with that particular Raspberry. So, all right, guys. Well, once again, Awesome. I enjoyed doing it. It's another project, something I'd never done before, but I just thought, let's see if it can be done. And you know me, I'll bake a pie into anything. All right, guys, well, we will see you on the next video. Have a fantastic week, and I cannot wait to see you. Have a good one.